God bless you. Um, I know this last week has been tumultuous. Uh, we've had the two uh, police officer killings we've had. Um, also, the shootings of five police in the Dallas area. It's been a stressful week for everyone. Anger, angst, uh, uh, fear, trepidation have just been at their greatest. And I want to go back to delivering the word of God that will lift up. I mean, uh, even though I believe in justice and divine justice and divine order, uh, I'm going to just talk to someone today about the goodness of the Lord because I think someone, sometimes in certain areas of our lives that we go out and we wave the white flag. Well, this is for that person who's waved the white flag as if it's too late in whatever area of your life. I'm telling you that there's still hope. And it comes from the gospel, uh, according to St. John, the 11th chapter through 11th chapter, the 34th verse through verse 40. It reads as follows, and he said, where have you laid him? That's in the red, so Jesus said it. They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Short, shortest passage of scripture there is. Uh, Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore again, groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said, unto him, Lord, by this time he sinketh, for he has been dead four days. Verse 40, Jesus said unto her, said is I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. I want to go back to where, and hang my hat on where Martha says, by now he stinketh. And I, I guess, you know, if I would give a message to this particular clip, it would be overcoming stinky situations, overcoming stinky situations. Um, going back here to the text, uh, it says, where have you laid on Jesus? Uh, after coming on the scene, asked where they had laid Lazarus who had, had died. And he said, they said unto him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man, they were doubting Jesus at that time, which opened the eyes of the blind, and have caused that even this man should not have died. Verse 38, Jesus therefore again groaning himself, coming to the grave, it was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus says, Take ye away the stone. This is what Jesus said, Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he has been dead four days. It was the teaching of the religious leaders of that particular day, pre-Jesus, that the human soul hovered around the body for three days, seeking to re-enter the body. Uh, it was at the advent of the fourth day that all hope was given up, that your toast, your cook, your goose is cooked. That's it. It's a wrap. That's what they taught in that particular day. And Martha, and, 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 you know, Martha in this particular passage of Scripture felt very secure in telling Jesus that because now Lazarus has been four days, that he had already gone past the threshold of the teaching that what was taught in that day, that he was good as dead, he was good as cooked. It was over. It's a wrap. It's all over. But he, she, he said, uh, uh, she said to Jesus, by now he stinketh. Folks, there is some folks that say the same thing about you and I. They, they'll look at your age. They'll look at the severity of some blunders, mistakes, and missteps in your life. And they'll say, hey, it's a wrap. But Jesus defied the stinky <laughs> situation. He didn't, you know, he, he, you know, while there, I'm sure that there was, you know, because their embalming skills may not have been up to ours and Lazarus laid away in the grave and maybe his flesh had already started to, uh, to rot. And here we are 
it, you know, Jesus is dealing with, but he was willing to go into stinky situations. Now, he's basically saying that there's hope even after this, some stinky situations. And there's some folks where your credit is, is long dead, where your vitality and your health is a wreck, where your relationship is is uh, on on broken pieces, literally. And, and you know, we, we you can almost say that those are some stinky situations. But this is what Jesus said. He said, Jesus said unto her, Sayest I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, Thou shouldest see the glory of God. That word glory in the original language is the word doxa. In the original Greek is doxa. It means brilliance, splendor, and radiance. So this is basically God saying that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the brilliance, splendor, and radiance of God, God's best. Folks, you got to believe right in the midst of the stink, right in the midst of, of the rancor, right in the midst of tough situations and, and tight spots and adverse situations going on all in your life, that God still can work if you would believe that you shall see the glory of God, that God's got a better place, that God's got a better plan, that God's got a better day that he has reserved for you. Child of God, my brother, my sister, my, my Facebook friend, my YouTube uh, associate, wherever this may be seen, that, 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 that LinkedIn connection, you know, your life is not over. It may look like it's a stinky situation. It may look like it's a wrap. It may look like there's no coming back from the punch that life has given you. But right in the midst of the stink, right where others expect to find stink, that Jesus saw glory. So God can look past your uh, uh, detractions. God can look past your shortcomings. God can look past your missteps and mistakes. And while you're ready to have a funeral, God is ready to throw an awesome party for you, uh, child of God. He says in one passage, in the same chapter, in another passage, he said that I am the resurrection and the life. And God can not only raise those from the dead, but he can raise your dead dreams. He can raise your dead hopes. He can raise your dead aspirations. He can raise your. He can bring you back from credit death. He can bring you about back from marriage uh, malaise. He can do whatever he wants to do. But if you would as believe, you'll see the glory of God right in the midst of the stink, right in the midst of stinking thinking, and right in the midst of hardening of the attitudes, right in the midst of of of. I'm tired of being in a stinky place or or, 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 or or this life stinks, that God can work glory in your life. The Bible says right here that if thou wouldest believe, and it's in the red, that thou shouldest see the glory of God, the brilliance, the splendor, and the radiance. If you're bold enough to believe God at a stinky spot, at a stinky place, with stinky circumstances, God can do the absolute miraculous in your life. Your situation is not too far gone. It's not too late. It's not over. It's not a wrap. You don't have to weary in world doing because if you believe right where you are, God can still send wonders your way. When you're talking about the brilliance, the splendor, and the radiance of God, you're talking about God's promising to do wonders in your life. If you're bold enough and you want to seek deliverance from the stinky place in your life and my life stinks and stinky attitudes, dare to believe in God and I promise the Lord will work wonders in your life. That's the word. God bless you.